G'day mates, happy Father's Day to all you legend dads out there, hope it's a good one. Today I want to quickly show you our brand new Sleep HQ O2 report feature, which will be available to all Sleep HQ Pro members starting tomorrow. But before we get into that, I quickly want to discuss the hard, hardware that's required to track your blood oxygen level inside of Sleep HQ. Now, it's very, very easy to do if you have an iOS device, an iPhone. I just got access to our beta Android app. It's a little bit buggy, so we're working through some of the bugs, but hopefully that will be available very, very soon, all right? I know it's been a long time coming. Forgive me, it's been a royal pain in the ass. I, I won't go into it all, but it's coming soon. But for now, if you're using an Android app, you'll need to download the Vi Health app. And then to get that data into Sleep HQ, you've got to export the CSV or the binary file and then upload that into Sleep HQ. It's a little bit of a fuck around, I know, but that's the way it is. Um, now, when it comes to the hardware, this is important too because it's a little bit confusing. Um, there's lots of different devices that are compatible. They are all Viatom devices. However, different companies white label these devices, including us, all right? So this one here is the Gen 1. You see it's got a little blue band around the outside. This is a Gen 1 O2 ring. Now, when it comes to this ring, you can get it wherever you like. It will be compatible with Sleep HQ. Same goes with this. This is an OxyFit, same thing, compatible with Sleep HQ. Beep, 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 beep. Doesn't matter where you get it from. Same with this one here. This is the, the Check Me. All right, normally it's got like a little band where you put that and that goes on your finger. However, when it comes to this one, this is the latest one. You can see it's got the silver little band. We call it the Sleep HQ O2 Ring Pro. This one has custom firmware for Sleep HQ for connecting up with the Magic Uploader. Now, some Sleep HQ members, they have this Magic Uploader and what it does is it syncs all your O2 Ring data, all your CPAP data, just streams it all up to Sleep HQ. So you never have to do a manual upload. And because of that, we've got some custom firmware. So if you want to use this device, it has to be the Sleep HQ O2 Ring Pro. If you buy it somewhere else, it, it won't work, okay? I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit confusing. And this is what it looks like inside of Sleep HQ. So this is the daily dashboard, the daily view. So we can see here we're checking out Friday, September 5th, 2025. Go to bed, wear your ring, wake up the next day, and you have all this wonderful information at your disposal. So we'll scroll down here, we've got all the statistics, your O2 score, we've got the high resolution traces here, the SpO2, this is your blood oxygen levels. So we can see what the blood oxygen level is doing throughout the night. We've got our movement trace here. And this is really helpful looking at sleep disturbance. Because a lot of the time, patients have a really good low AHI, but when you have a look at the movement, there's a lot of movement. There's still a lot of respiratory disturbance. So I'll just zoom in here and we'll take a look at that. So I'm just clicking and dragging. This is perfect. So you can see he was in core sleep, this blue section here, and then he's woken up for whatever reason. Maybe he needed to go to the loo, whatever it is. He's woken up, we get these movement spikes, we get an increase in the pulse rate, and we can also see here he is now awake, going from core to wake. Right. Pretty cool. And this is pretty cool, check this out. Now during deep sleep, you can see here the pulse rate is quite steady. Slightly trending up, but very steady. And then all of a sudden, look at it up here, bouncing around. And this correlates with REM sleep. Now during REM sleep, your body is like paralyzed, but inside it's having a party and you can see it here, doing all the dreaming and so on. There's one here, another REM period here, another REM period here, and another REM period here. So it all matches up, it's all just patterns. Same with sleep apnea, it's just patterns. And this is how these sleep staging algorithms are developed with these biomarkers, pulse rate and movement and so on. 
And another pattern to look for is this. Normally at the end of a REM block, you'll normally have an arousal. You'll normally wake up after a dream. And we can see it here. So we have our REM period here, and then we have our movement, woke up. Then we have our REM period here, awake, movement, woke up. REM period here, awake, movement, woke up. All right, so I've gone off on a bit of a tangent like I always do, apologies. We'll take a quick look at the range data and then I'll show you how to generate a report. So we're gonna zoom out now and take a look at the big picture. Are we heading in the right direction? And the good thing is with Dan is he's losing a lot of weight. He's on a GLP-1 and here's his weight dropping down. And you can see here, look at his blood oxygen level just trending up beautifully. So it was down here, this is the average, 91%. Look at it now, up here at 96%. So I'll come up here and we'll go report and we'll go new report, new O2 summary. This is the new one here. And we're gonna choose our ring. He's using the check me. We're gonna do category monthly. So there's a lot of options here for you. You can do a quarterly report. You can do an annual report, custom report, whatever you like. You got the options there. We're just gonna do a monthly and we'll select the month of, let's go, we'll go November. And we'll call this November 2024. Click Generate O2 Report. There we go, it's done. So we've got two options here. We have a share link. This is an anonymous share link that you can paste in a browser anywhere, put it on a forum, you're good to go. Or we can download a PDF. So we'll just click the share link here. And here's the new report. All right, so here we go. November 2024 versus June 2025. Let's compare the results. He's lost a lot of weight and it's looking really nice. Average blood oxygen has gone from 93% up to 95%. How good is that? Drops per hour has dropped from two to less than one. 4% drops, improved again. Time below 90%. Used to be seven minutes a night, now it's only eight seconds per night and the heart rate is the same. And I'll scroll down here and show you the, the other charts. So this top one is the average blood oxygen levels. And you can see it used to be below 95 a lot and now it's always pretty much above 95. This next one here, the Nadir, so this is the lowest blood oxygen level for the night. And you can see it used to be right down here at 85. And now it's rarely below 90. Um, ODI more than 3%. So this is the oxygen desaturation index. How many blood oxygen drops you have per hour that are more than 3% from baseline. So if you have a lot of breathing disturbance, your blood oxygen level goes whoop, drops down. This is the count um, per hour. Right. You can see here up at six, up at six here, five, five, and now pretty much always below two. Really good. And the same thing for the ODI 4%, but instead of using 3% as the threshold down from baseline, back up again, we've got 4%. So it's got to drop further, okay? Then we have our heart rate. And then we also include the last recorded SpO2 trace from the report. All right, so this is November 30th here. That's what it looked like. Lots of big drops here. And then here is June 30th, nice and stable. All right, mates, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates and have a great Father's Day 2025. Cheers.